Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I know some people like these kind of MOOC magazine reviews. This one is actually a magazine, not a MOOC in this case, but uh, I know some people like these videos, some people don't, uh, but I wanted to make some more of these for the people who are interested in them. And I have not a lot, but I have a handful of like older issues as well, ones that I just kind of picked up along the way at like secondhand bookstores in Japan, ones that were particularly of interest to me even though they were older issues. This one obviously is about Advance of Zeta, or at least has some Advance of Zeta content in here, so that's why this one was of interest to me. So this is the Dengeki Hobby from March 2013, uh, and this is actually the 2200th uh, issue as well, which is pretty cool, so it's kind of a special one. So I just thought it'd be cool to take a look back at some of these older issues. I mean, obviously anything like new in here has now been out for a long time, but it could just be cool to just kind of look back and see, you know, what was going on in March of 2013. So let me know if this is gonna be interesting for any of you, but uh, let's get into it. So first off here on the front, obviously we have a really cool image of an Advanced Zeta kit here. This would be uh, the Hazenthle Ra, I think, is that correct? Uh, anyway, I could be wrong about that. As much as a fan, as much as I am a Advanced Zeta fan, even I get them confused sometimes, but uh, so we got that on the front there looking very cool. And on the back, an advertisement for the Master Grade Tall Geese when that came out. It doesn't seem like that came out that long ago, but I guess it has been out for that long. So some other uh, Master Grade EW kits there at the bottom as well. So this was kind of, I guess, I, at the peak of that, an advertisement for an online shop, the uh, Tall Geese 2, coming out as a P-Bandai kit then at that time. So let's get cracking. Now with these uh, magazines, instead of like the books, like the Gundam Hobby Life or something, which is more focused on like the content, this one, uh, these uh, Dengeki Hobby and like Hobby Japan magazines are like half advertisement, half uh, like actual like content. So a lot of this is just gonna be advertisements for different stuff that was coming out at the time and different things like that. So also it's not entirely Gundam related. So there's gonna be advertisements and things for all sorts of non-Gundam stuff and stuff about kits that are non-Gundam kits, ship models, and other stuff like that. A little bit, not quite a lot, but there's some in here as well. Like, for example, over here are some PVC figures, obviously not in very uh, related to the content that we're going to focus on for this video. There's also just some, like, Volks uh, figures, but I think they're Volks uh, uh, resin kits, actually, there. So we got our table of contents over here, and this Sasabi kit, which I'm pretty sure I recognize that, and I've looked through this magazine, but I haven't looked through it for quite a while. This is pretty interesting down here, considering that I'm just recently getting ready to review the Frame Arms Girl Sylphie kit. That definitely looks like it's the same artist who did like the Sylphie artwork, who I think does all the artwork for all of the desktop army stuff, I want to say. So pretty sure that's probably him there, but that's pretty cool. So I'm interested what this section is about, because there's a bunch of other different uh, just cool artworks here. So I'm guessing this is just all about different artists. I want to say probably different collaborating, collaborating artists over the years since this is the 200th issue. Oh yeah, so it's actually just saying it's just messages for the, like congratulations for the 200th. So it's just messages from different artists and things here. So that would be a Blade, I guess, is that artist in particular. Over here is Max Watanabe as well. So he's got his little message there. So this is already just from all different, I uh, think particularly famous Japanese modelers and artists and stuff that have been featured in the magazine. Uh, so some different artists down here. Mecha designers here, rework. And up here, I have one from Yoji Shinkawa there as well, so very cool stuff. And there we got some focus over here on the Valve Rave, which I've got a couple of Valve Rave kits over there that I've got in the queue to review pretty soon. And I keep, some different Valve Rave thing keeps coming up, and so like in the other day with the episode of a Plamono Trend with Josh, we took a look at a kind of Valve Rave themed kit, and now this seeing more Valve Rave, just making me think, ah, oh, dang, I really gotta get around to building and reviewing those Valve Rave kits. But that looks very cool there. Uh, we got some cool SD designs over here as well. Those are looking pretty cool and some old uh, old Gundam artwork there with some old aquatic Xeon mobile suits. Uh, Dan Board over here, Yotsubato. So this would be about Wonderfest Winter 2013. So some stuff there from Wonderfest looks like. This is just maybe when the original Kotobukiya Dan Board kit came out. Uh, and I think there is also a set too. I think there's maybe the kit and then there's a set of uh, the figure and there's a figure down board there as well. So some other different uh, anime related things here. Uh, USA Toy Shop Monster Japan. I'm not sure I've ever heard of that. It's a U it's a toy store, but it's focused on like USA toys there in Japan. So that's pretty interesting. I wonder if that toy store is still around. I'll have to maybe try to check that out next time there in Japan if I can ever go back. 
after the Rona virus is all done anyway. Uh, so some other different uh, figure and uh, 112 scale uh, items there, some seats I guess that you can get in 112 scale. Some other different topics related to uh, C3, Gunhead, uh, some Super Sentai thing there as well. Here it looks like here's some uh, submitted artworks to the magazine that they just feature in here. I think they just kind of like pick some of the best ones, feature those in there from uh, maybe the best ones or from famous people or something. Anyway, it looks pretty cool. Uh, a bunch of different items all in here. What are these? Just about some different kits and stuff like that. All right, now let's get into the good stuff here uh, from Mobile Suit Variation R. The Troublemakers, it looks like we've got a ground Gundam here facing off with a red goof, a red desert type goof, I think that is, it looks like. It's kind of hard to tell in the photo, but I'm sure we got some more photos over here. Here we are. So I guess this is just for some MSV manga here. So we got characters and mobile suit design over here. Pretty interesting design there for that. I'm interested to just see what the kit form looks like here, which is a little bit more appealing for me. Really cool looking kit. It looks like it's based off, uh, or this is a custom build based off of the Zaku 2 version 2.0. Uh, so this is the high mobility land battle type is what this one's called. And I don't think I've ever seen this before. It's very cool though. Obviously it has a shoulder armor, a little bit reminiscent of the goof. Uh, and then the torso, yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a kind of desert goof, I think it is, looks sort of like that. but. This would be something cool to look into making. See, it's sort of like a, the thighs are sort of goof-esque as well. So it's kind of a mashup of different things like of goof and zaku, but really cool design, I gotta say. Yeah, I'm not sure I've ever seen that. High mobility land battle type zaku here. So very interesting. Looks like a really cool build. You got some work in progress photos over here, and it looks like he did use parts of Zaku 2.0 and also the goof, yes, and then a whole bunch of plot plating, redesigning there around the legs and the chest, especially there on those parts. So looks very cool. And I love the painting style, and this is really nice as well. The colors are cool. So I guess this is, uh, I guess it's going through like the past 200 issues, uh, about, and I'm not sure, it doesn't say 10 years, but it's, it, I checked the translation, is it 10 masterpieces or something? It's just going to be different things from the past uh, issues. So let's just take a look at some of these here. This is from 2006. We've got a big Strike Noir uh, bust there. I'm not sure if this is just uh, completely scratch built, it looks like, because it's really cool. It's got like the inside of the shoulder armor built there, and it looks like all scratch built, of course, for that part at least. Or I don't know. Yeah, this looks like it's entirely all scratch built, just a bust here of the Strike Noir. So that's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, and it says it's a 170 second scale. So it's not like that huge, but still looks really cool. That's from 2006. Another issue over here, Advanced Zeta from 2002. I think maybe that was, that must've been the first Advanced Zeta issue or had to have been around there, 2002. That's going way back. So maybe that was uh, one of the first ones to have anything like Advanced Zeta related. Then uh, down here about the Master Grade F91, now we've got the 2.0 out, but this is from 2006 when the uh, 1.0 I guess must have been coming out then. Doesn't even look that bad <laughs> as a 1.0. Over here then in 2006 as well, also we've got a Hazel here with the uh, Got Plant booster on there. I love the look of that. So it's got the Hoodoo Doo parts on the top and then the Got Plant booster and some shields and all that. So a uh, super high mobility type uh, HGUC Hazel there. Over here, a bust as well. This is 1 12th scale bust there of the Gundam. That looks very cool. And some more Advanced Zeta stuff here from 2006 as well, February 2006, uh, with the Hazel, with all of the, uh, it's a Hazel Ra, I guess it would be there, with all the Hoodoo's on there, double Hoodoo's. And then up here, uh, from 1999, Solomon Express. So wow, it's going way back when we had the Solomon Express Gundam there, looking very cool. I uh, really wish that we would get an actual kit of that at some point, but that does look pretty awesome. It's got just gigantic equipment on that thing. So I guess maybe this was saying like 10 masterpieces because here anyway is number one. This is the Bandai 100 scale model kit master grade conversion by Naoki. Of course it'd be Naoki featured as number one. Uh, but here is yeah the Strike Freedom Gundam uh, and it looks pretty awesome. I really like the way he's got the head a little bit more wider, a little bit more round design there for the head. It looks pretty cool. And overall, I mean, it's not super detailed. It's definitely not to the caliber, I think, that Naoki does now. I think Naoki, Naoki definitely does better work now. This is, uh, this is from 2013, so seven years later. Uh, it's really nice, for sure, but I really like his style now better. How he used a little bit more weathering, a little bit to kind of more filtering and stuff. This is super clean. It looks nice, uh, for sure. 
uh, and like the modifications and everything to it look really cool. So we've got some more photos of that. I think on the next page, some more detailed photos, what the kit is going to look like there. And then some close-ups of the head and comparing his head versus the original head. So yeah, he definitely rounded out, like especially around the back of the head, a little bit more. There and some other work in progress photos over here on this page as well. You can see the uh, frame that he's built into like the back side of the skirt armor and just some really nice detailing around on that. So it's a, yeah, definitely a beautiful looking Strike Freedom. Some more photos of that here. It is like just a standing all posed up looking cool. And yeah, just the modifications to the feet as well. So it looks like he extended out the feet, uh, reshaped the legs, and just did a whole bunch of work on this for sure. Looks great. And then play back to, or so that was from, sorry, uh, this issue is from 2013. This particular kit was from 2007 actually. So that's uh, 13 years ago that that was uh, featured in that issue. So this one also, March 2007, also 2007, going back to this one here, uh, Bandai non-scale plastic model. This is the LM HG kit here by Tatsuya Yonezu. I never heard of him. It's not a name that I am familiar with, but he modified that to, I guess this is the artwork that he was basing that off of, which is an artwork of the Evangelion. I don't think that I've ever seen. It's pretty cool though. It's got some different bits added. He's got the uh, big horn cut off there and he's got some different weapons on there looking pretty cool. I love this like white striping detail on the center section. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that before. And just overall, just the shape's really nice. The reshaping of this Evangelion kit. Do look really cool. So you got some close-ups of that. It's sort of like little bits up here on the shoulder look like little cameras or something. That's really interesting. And yeah, it's the decal work on that. I'm guessing the white part maybe is not decals. That might be just masked and painted, but this other decal work on here does look pretty cool. Got a whole bunch more images of that posed up in different uh, action poses and things. There's what the, like the base kit unpainted and like in the middle of being modified. So it modified the ankle armor there as well. Oh yeah, I didn't notice that before, but it's definitely modified ankle armor. Also reshaping the legs a bunch, reshaping the shoulders, of course, the chest a little bit as well. There, the arms, it looks like the arms and like the torso section mostly left kind of mostly the same, mostly original. But uh, the gun looks really cool, a new gun for that. Then here we have uh, the final Advance of Zeta. It says there from back in October 2007. So this is a lot from 2007. I guess that was a great year for hobby, uh, Dengeki Hobby. This is the, yeah, Heisenthai Ra 2. Oh, okay, that's what it was. I was close earlier when I guess the cover was Heisenthai Ra 2. Anyway, uh, so yeah, this is modeled by Ryuji Soriyama. Oh, okay, so that's a familiar name we've seen. If you guys have seen my past videos, taking a look at other different uh, Japanese magazines and books, I think uh, he's been in a couple of different uh, Hobby Life, uh, Jap Gundam Hobby Life magazines and stuff, so... Of course, this is awesome, and now we're finally getting this as like an actual kit that you can actually make now uh, without having to modify and uh, kit bash a bunch of stuff, like really hard to find things. So uh, that would be great to be able to make this a lot easier now than uh, he had to back at that time, but it looks awesome still, just as it is. Really cool. I love the head design on the, uh, the Hazen Play, how it's got like the really far extended out bits out to the front. And the detail on this on this is amazing. It's really just like really classic advanced Zeta, like older advanced Zeta stuff. Now again, just before we started getting some of the new kits, just this older stuff that just looks so nice. It's so crisp, and it's just really fitting to the advanced Zeta style to be modeled in that way. So like the modelers who do like this really awesome advanced Zeta stuff, it's really cool to see. I like that. So there is another bit here just talking about uh, volumes 1 through 50. So like some of the, the first, some like the earliest, earliest ones, uh, some of the first 50 issues of Dengeki Hobby Magazine. So that's pretty odd though. I feel like Dengeki Hobby Magazine has to be older than 1998. I don't think that's when the first issue came out. Really? But I don't know. Man, maybe it was. Maybe it's just some of the other hobby magazines are older. Uh, but... So some cool, cool stuff here. You got the XS, the Cubile, uh, the Faz. So some cool Sentinel stuff here in the center. Very interesting colored version of the S Gundam there with, uh, looks like, oh, it's just the red version. It's just in shadow, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, some other Advanced Zeta stuff in there as well. Over here, volumes 51 through 100. So a little bit later on, you got some cool stuff in here as well. Really interesting hazel Gundam here painted with like red and white with like white striping, sort of similar to like the Amro Rays, like kind of custom like red striping you sometimes see on there. But I don't think I've ever seen a hazel painted quite that way, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then a really cool orange colored GPO-1 here as well. 
So that's pretty interesting also. All right, then we've got volumes of 101 through 150 over here, getting a little bit more recent. Now we got some uh, rebuild of Evangelion stuff, Votam stuff, uh, the Astrea, uh, some Ternay, some more cool stuff. So a really interesting build here of the Exia with like some custom built like uh, inner frame of the armor kind of bits on there. That's pretty interesting. And then over here, 151 through 200. We got some more issues here with the Mega Size Gundam, it looks like. I think so. It looks, sort of looks like the 3.0, but I don't think the 3.0 is out yet. So I think that would be, yeah, it is the 148. It's the Mega Size. There we go. Okay, anyway, and some other cool stuff on here as well. Some more Advanced Zeta later on. Advanced Zeta stuff there as well. All right, then getting into a big feature here, well, at least a little bit, I guess, about uh, Gundam Unicorn. So about the uni Unicorn uh, manga series there. Some stills here from episode six. Episode six is actually the uh, episode that I saw in the theater there when I was living in Japan. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess it was at that at that time, 2013, so it makes sense. That was awesome. And then we've got, yes, the clear uh, color version of the Rosen Zulu. That was a really fun kit to work on. Uh, as well back in the day we got the Banshee Norn I guess that was like when the Banshee Norn first showed up right uh, right at the end of that episode so there's a big feature on that uh, that was kind of I guess the big reveal at the time uh, and then the armed armor DE shield here which was also coming out for Masquerade you could use with the Masquerade Unicorn as well as the high new or the uh, new Verka and the Shinanju Stein so that was cool and then the big new announcement that we saw on the back of this book is the Master Grade Tall Geese, which was coming out, which I love this artwork that was uh, for the Tall Geese at the time. It's really cool, this image here of the modeled Tall Geese Master Grade kit. So that was, of course, big news at the time. Everyone was super excited, and the kit was fantastic. Great kit. Here it is. Uh, this one looks a little bit more modeled like Naoki's style. It's got a little bit of, like... A little bit of weathering on there. It's kind of desaturated the colors, a little, little bits of color I think that it's supposed to have. Yeah, typically a little bit more yellow on there, but he's gotten rid of some of these yellow bits and just made it just the yellow there for those. I don't think that, oh, uh, it isn't by Naoki. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, that's kind of cool that uh, it was so obviously Naoki that uh, I was able to peg that before seeing his name over there on it. But yeah, definitely very clearly Naoki's style there for that build. Get rid of a little bit of color, do a little bit of light weathering on that. Looks really cool though, looks great. Uh, and then the Masquerade Tall Geese too, like I said, that was coming out as a P Bandai kit there at the time. So we got some more images of that, and yeah, looks great on there. Uh, we all have seen this by now. Uh, a little bit of reshaping there on the head, which is really cool. I like that uh, reshaping that he's done on the head there. Basically, just kind of gotten just kind of made the head a little bit shorter especially like the face bit gotten rid of like the little bits on the edge of the face and like underneath the chin shorten it up a little bit I think it definitely looks a lot better uh, his rework there on the head a little bit of reworking here on the legs as well to make them a little bit more fat a little bit more kinkly this is kind of like more along the lines of how the real grade looks where I prefer the master grade looks where it's got the thinner lower legs but I guess Naoki went for this style, which we later would see on the real grade release where the it's got uh, thicker lower legs. But I think as I've heard a lot of people say that that's more anime accurate. Uh, I just kind of prefer the thinner legs there on it. The back of the shield looks really cool there without the yellow on it. And then some tutorial action in here as well. Uh, I guess just painting in the inside. Uh, this is kind of a lot of stuff that I've covered in a lot of my videos. Uh, painting in the inside of the armor to just give it a better look there. It's using some uh, weathering markers or penaline markers to do your penalining on that and uh, on different colors, using different colors for different color plastic, different color armor. Uh, so spraying some top coat on there, doing a little bit of a pastel work as well, just to kind of shade some of the edges it looks like on that, spraying that to seal that in. A little bit of then a white pencil on there to just bring out, uh, bring back some of the edge on that. So. Pretty cool, little bits of weathering and things that you can do to the kit to make it look a lot better just straight out of the box without being fully painted. It looks pretty great there with just this bit of work I've done to that, so that's pretty cool. Then we have the Bandai 1-100 scale uh, Gundam Age 1 Glansa Master Grade Kit. This is converted from the Age 1 Normal by uh, Takoyo 4, it looks like kind of hard to read the name down there, but uh, from Takoyo 4. 
the age one glancer here. So that's really cool. I like the glancer design. I wish that we would have an actual master grade of that, but it's just modeled using the age one normal. And then you just scratch build all the glance up parts for that. So that's pretty awesome. It looks great. It looks really cool. Uh, I liked the, the HG. And yeah, it would be really awesome to get an actual master grade of that at some point. But don't really think that that's ever going to actually happen. But it looks really cool. Uh, Bandai 144 scale high grade Gundam Age. Thileva? I'm not sure. Yeah, I am not familiar with that. But this is based off of, it says based off of the G-Bouncer. And he just customized it. So it's some variant of the G-Bouncer, I guess. I've never still yet seen Age, so I'm not familiar with this particular variant. But it looks really cool. I kind of wish that we did have an actual kit of this. It's got these cool bits there on the back, which I guess uh, shoot out. Maybe it has some sort of like funnels or something. So that's pretty interesting. The color scheme, the head design on that looks very cool. It kind of reminds me of the crossbone uh, ghost with green and like the big fin like on the head like that. Similar sort of look. That's a really cool variant design that I've never seen before, actually. I don't remember seeing it before, but I really like this, actually. The colors and the design of this are quite interesting, so kind of a shame we didn't get a proper kit of this, but it looks really cool. Uh, all right, then Gundam Age Exolog, the Golden Gordolin Perfect. Don't know what this is. It's something, though. Uh, <laughs> something from Gundam Age? What is that? I don't know. Uh, Yes, I, uh, what is that? I don't know. Is this like supposed to be some sort of mobile armor or something from Age? I don't know. What is that? It's this big golden bird thing. 1144 scratch build by Takeshi Hitokabe. So yeah, those of you guys who know a little bit more about Age, let me know what this is. But it looks like it's supposed to be some sort of mobile armor or something, I guess. So I guess it does also have optional arms as well. So, Alright, anyway, here we've got... Uh, here we've got some really awesome looking Kondo artwork. So this would be Zeta and I guess a sort of version of the mass production type Hyakushiki, I think that is supposed to be over here. And then the Mark II down there in the bottom as well. So well, I guess it's the Zeta. It's a different version of the Zeta. The legs, the head, different parts, different look, look uh, a little bit different on that. But it's a really cool painting here from uh, 2012. And some aura artwork in here, playback of the Z Gustav. So maybe that's what that is. Uh, or maybe some other sort of version of that. So the Z Gustav, very interesting version of the Zeta there. Uh, an actual model kit sort of version of that, I guess. And some more mobile suits over here. Uh, once again, the Hyakushiki, a different, very frumpy, thick looking version of the uh, Gyarazolu. And then a Dom, a Gundam, a Zaku up here. So some cool artwork in here if you're a fan of Kondo's artwork style. And then his version of the Sazabi here modeled as well. So this is what we kind of saw earlier in the table of contents. This would be the Sazabi modeled by Hisuke. And it's got Zimmerit all over it. And it's got this cool custom uh, camo pattern on there as well. So it's a really interesting version of ground type Sazabi. It's something we, we've seen before. I mean, some people do sometimes different ground type versions of the Sazabi. It's usually, I think, kind of based off of this design. I think this is was kind of like the first time we really saw the ground type Sazabi was from this particular manga, if I remember correctly. Uh, a Kondo manga where we had ground type version of the, like, the, the Giradoga, I think, actually. Sorry, I think maybe I said Girazulu or something earlier. But anyway, Giradoga uh, and the Sazabi. Uh, so it's kind of interesting there. It's a little bit too much Zimmerit for me. I don't mind people. Some people don't like Zimmerit at all. Some people like it. This is a little bit much for me. It's kind of all over there. But uh, still, it's a pretty cool looking take on the Sazabi. And then there's a little, I guess that's a much smaller version of that. Oh, uh, it's a B Club 1 to 220 scale. So it's 1 100 scale versus 1 220 scale down there at the bottom. And here we have the RX-78-3 uh, G3 Gundam 144 scale kit modeled by Daisuke. It's from Operation Buran. So I don't know, but uh, this is based off of what? It's based off of the G30th HG, which is an HG design that I really quite like. I really like the design of the G30th. It's kind of based off of the 101 scale Gundam. So it's a cool design. He's uh, made a little bit of modification to this. But basically, it's just kind of a different uh, color version. It's G3, but it's not quite as purple. We usually see the G3 looking a little bit more purplish blue. But he's gone for pretty much just mostly gray here for this version of that. And, of course, got the red and yellow on the shield. But it looks really cool. A little bit of detail that he's added to that, even on the V-fin a little bit there. And then over here, yeah, here is about the Giradoga uh, that I was talking about before. And the Sazabi. So the Giradoga, the Sazabi, and the Gundam Mark III, and the Gundam Mark II down here as well. 
these are all, I guess, different uh, B club, one, one, 1 to 220 scale. These are 1 to 220 scale, and these are 1 to 144 scale kits there of the Mark III and the Mark II, so that's kind of interesting. Some old B club resin kits there. So here's the inside story of Kazuhisa Kondo. So you can get more information about him if you want to read that Japanese interview there. Uh, and then getting into some Zero Gundam SD stuff. It's a pretty interesting looking SD design. I'm not sure if it's one I've ever seen before. And Gunpla Formula. Here we have the new HG Banshee Norn, of course. So it's got some new arm parts, minus the armed armor VN and BS on the arms there, of course. And then it's got the DE shield and the revolving launcher on the beam magnum. So that's very cool. But episode 6 uh, version of the... Our uh, Unicorn Gundam down there, it looks like as well, kind of a special limited uh, clear color version of that with the green psycho frame. Uh, and then the Jesta, the Master Grade Jesta in its planning phases, not yet released yet, we just got a 3D render of the Master Grade Jesta there, so before that came out. An HGUC version of the Jesta Cannon, so there's that there, and the Master Grade Verka uh, Shinanju Stein when that was coming out, so some cool, like the peak Unicorn releases there at the time. And the Master Grade Rezzle, Type A and B, another really awesome kit. It's got the BB Senshi Delta Plus down here, as well as BB Senshi uh, Banshee there, it looks like. We have the clear color version of the Banshee here as well, as a P Bandai item, online hobby shop item there. Uh, HG version of the High Mobility Type Zaku 2 here was coming out at the time. So we had the Black Tri Stars version, I guess this would be who? Uh, Shin Matsunaga's. I couldn't tell if it was white because it's supposed to be Shin Matsunaga's Zaku or if it was white because it's just uh, showing a prototype. But yeah, it's supposed to be uh, the Shin Matsunaga's high mobility type Zaku 2 coming out on HGUC. Uh, so this is obviously all a section focused on uh, upcoming releases. And there was a lot of stuff coming out at the time, I guess. So we had the HG Glenza, which I was just mentioning before, which we saw as a scratch build, but this is when the actual HG kit was coming out at that time. Uh, the HGUC EZ8 here as well with the parachute pack, very cool. Uh, the HG Perfect Strike, the Real Grade Destiny, both of which I think everyone could pretty much agree were not very good kits. Uh, and some other different age stuff coming out here. The Shaldal Rogue, fantastic kit. And this one is, oh, what's the name of this one? I forget. Yeah, I can't remember the name of that one offhand, but... Uh, then let's see, this is a P-Bandai stuff, so the P-Bandai Talgis 2, the P-Bandai Amaro's Zeta, uh, the P-Bandai Yuma Lightning Master Grade Zaku 2, that came out a while ago as well, uh, BB Senshi stuff here, Legend BB, and then a kind of 7-Eleven, looks like 7-Eleven, right, version of the HG Strike Freedom Gundam there, and some arcade exclusives of those two different, like, uh, color variants of those HG kits. And then here, focus on a GBWC 2012. We've got a whole bunch of stuff here from GBWC 2012. The winner, of course, was the Project Gwen Gyun Rezel uh, by Ide. We've got a bunch of cool stuff out that year. I remember this one as well, too. The uh, Wing Gundam, like, in the side of the cliff. Kind of like a uh, turn A sort of style there for that. So that was pretty fun. And here we have some different Assault Kingdom stuff. Man, I kind of miss, miss the Assault, Assault Kingdom line of figures. They were pretty cool. I actually have this one of the Banshee Noir, and this one came with the manga release at the time, and there's another set that was coming out. It's at the time the Unicorn in the Unicorn mode, the Strike. Uh, so I guess this was the first set of uh, Assault Kingdom stuff to come out, because it's got the, the Ale Strike, the original Gundam, the Unicorn, and the Shinanju, so it seems like that's probably it was the first round of that. Then Assault Kingdom 2, yeah, is hinted at over here with a few other, other, other different releases, and then also Assault Kingdom EX, was, of course, the uh, Kshatriya, which is a really cool figure as well. One that I always wanted to get. I never actually got around to ever buying one of those. We got some other candy toy stuff over here, Converge Series 10. Uh, I have a couple of these uh, different Converge figures from that series. Uh, some Converge Special, the Gundam versus the Zeong. Uh, some different stand art stuff here. Stand art stuff is kind of hit and miss. The stand art designs are kind of goofy. Some of them are... Very interesting takes on the design. So uh, this would be standard 16 and 17 here advertised. So some of these I haven't really ever seen before. The uh, Wing EW version, that would be kind of cool one to get at some point, actually. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I do have the Shinju Stein and the Marasai. But uh, the, the horn on my Marasai is broken, unfortunately. 
And uh, next, I forgot about that series of different Gashbon stuff. So there's different Gashbon stuff here. Uh, MSVR design there and some other different stuff. And now a section here of just black and white stuff, which is going to be kind of the uh, lesser important thing, stuff related to different card games. Here we got some artwork, which is pretty cool. Artwork from Gundam Age. If you're a Gundam Age fan, you got some really nice line art in here for a few different Gundam Age designs. So kind of the stuff that we saw before and Robot Labo. So some cool line art in here as well, designing artwork for that. And then it's switching over from being like all kind of Gundam and mecha related to getting into other anime and uh, different stuff in here it looks like as well. So you got Donboard again, Evangelion, uh, Hoi Hoi San, Frame Arms, and this uh, giant robot, I forget the name of that. Uh, it's not something that I'm particularly into, but you got all that. And actually the uh, Hoi Hoi San new edition of this just came out recently. Uh, so I guess this is 2009 when this kit uh, maybe first came out. Uh, but now we have the new edition, which recently came out, which I've got here in my queue, ready to review very soon for you guys. Uh, and here is the Gundam Ace advertisement for Gundam Ace magazine, which is uh, the magazine that has all the manga stuff in it. Uh, this was the manga of Gundam Ace that came with that Assault Kingdom figure of the Banshee Norn. So there's that. Uh, some other different interview stuff here, it looks like, or just letters from some different artists, it looks like. It's advertisements for some Macross stuff. If you're into that, some more, some pretty cool looking Macross stuff here. I'm not sure that's a design I've ever seen before, but I kind of like that. And some Code Geis, 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 I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, code, Code Geass, just going by the Japanese off that, but also sounds a bit weird. This is actually something I just found out recently. I didn't know that Bandai made these model kits until just recently that, uh, maybe, I guess maybe they haven't produced them in a long time, but Bandai makes a couple of model kits like of these and so I just was entirely unaware of that until I saw them in some other recent magazine or something recently. I think on Twitter maybe actually. And so I checked it out and yeah I was surprised to find out that Ben actually made some model kits of these. But those must not be very easy to come by I suppose. And then some LBX stuff over here. If you're into LBX there's some pretty cool looking kits there as well. You got some work in progress photos and things on these also. So that's pretty cool. More LBX stuff. And another one over here. That one actually is quite interesting. I like that. It's a little bit more simplified. It doesn't have like anything weird or too flashy on it. It's just like a very utilitarian looking robot there. Uh, and uh, Odin Mark II, another LBX kit. This one's actually kind of also kind of interesting looking. Another one I don't think I've ever really seen before. So you got some cool builds of those. Some more LBX stuff here it looks like. That one also looks kind of interesting. So man, uh, I'll have to try to maybe track down maybe one or two LBX kits because there's some of these I just have never seen before. Most of the ones that I've ever seen, I just didn't really think they looked all that interesting, but there's a couple of these that actually don't look too bad. Maybe some of these older ones are ones that might be a little bit more appealing to me. So here's some stuff here about uh, Space Battleship Yamato 2199 um, and some ship models from that. So you got a whole bunch of those and a whole bunch of those. And a whole bunch more of those. So I'm just kind of fast forwarding through this section a little bit just because it's something that it's not that interesting to me. Uh, and we've got over here a little Evangelion action <laughs> there. Some artwork. I'm not really sure what that's related to, but uh, something Evangelion related. I think this is a maybe kind of side story manga or something, basically. Uh, we've got a very odd looking Evangelion design, the Armoros. Yeah, so you see, it looks a little bit sort of like based off of the Eva Zero Two there, just by the head, but this is something totally not very Evangelion looking, but it's quite strange. Uh, then a rose in the wind, the van ship model here from Hasegawa. That's pretty cool looking uh, ship model there. Uh, and then some Zoids over here, the Shield Liger Command Wolf. Uh, this is a Kodobukiya D style kits, so like uh, SD style kits from Zoids from Kodobukiya there. So I guess this must have been when those were coming out. So it was very cute looking. And then also a couple other Zoids kits down there. And then Super Robot Wars stuff here. So got uh, some cool Super Robot Wars designs to check out. I'm really super unfamiliar with different uh, Super Robot Wars designs. But some of these are also pretty cool. Some of these are ki uh, actually have kits and some of them don't. But it looks like this is an actual kit that was maybe customized here as well. So like the original kit and then the custom version of that. It looks pretty interesting. 
Uh, I'll have to check out some more Super Robot Wars kits in the future as well from Kotobuiko. They make some pretty awesome ones. This one looks pretty interesting. A little bit uh, over the top for my personal taste, but it's uh, it's got a lot going on there. There's a super bulky one there as well, it looks like. It's more Super Robot Wars. And uh, uh, Metal Gear. So this must have been when the Metal Gear Rex first came out from Kotobukiya. So we got some a couple different painted versions of that, which look pretty awesome here. This green one looks pretty interesting and a little bit there with Yoji Shinkawa. So I really like this color version of the Metal Gear Rex. That's pretty cool. And there's a little bit more traditional looking version over here with a kind of digital camo on it. So that's pretty cool looking. Uh, and then there's the Anubis, which looks like maybe the Anubis was like just coming out at that time as well. Have uh, built and reviewed both of those kits actually. So if you want to check those out. I've not had a chance to paint either of them yet though. Something to look forward to. Uh, and then the Cosmos kit as well. So I guess this is like uh, some Kotobukiya. It's more of Kotobukiya. Uh, featured stuff here in the later section of the book, but some, uh, uh, I guess these are actually figures. These are Figma, Cosmos, and Telos figures here, but we do also have, here it is, here's the Kotobukiya kit version up there as well as to be the version uh, for Cosmos kit from Kotobukiya. Uh, here we have some Super Sentai stuff. Yeah, again, not really something I'm really interested in. I don't really know anything about, so uh, there's that. This is a kind of interesting design, this black one over here. It's kind of cool design going on for that. Uh, and then some Transformers stuff in here as well. Some more Transformers. There's a white guy in a Japanese magazine. And more Transformers, and then just getting into more obscure stuff. I guess SH Monster Arts, uh, King Kong there, and all sorts of different anime stuff. Kamen Rider stuff here, which I'm sure is probably going to be a fair amount of. Uh, Robot Damashi Double Zeta Gundam, Robot Damashi stuff here, so this is getting less uh, into the kits, but more Robot Damashi stuff, Elgaim, there it looks like, modeled by Naoki, it's pretty cool, Robot Damashi, uh, and Robot Battle, Robot Damashi Battle, Robot Damashi, here, Iron Man, and more, more uh, Power Ranger stuff, and Kamen Rider kind of stuff, I'm not sure if this is exactly Kamen Rider, or, yeah it is, okay, Kamen Rider Wizard, uh, Beast Diver, has uh, all sorts of this stuff, more Ultraman stuff here. Uh, Ultraman, special interview, Ultraman, so that would be pretty cool if you're an Ultraman fan. Some cool stuff to see there. Uh, ship models, that's pretty cool as well. Uh, tank models, we got some of that in here as well, sand and wind. Got your tank models, you got some aircraft in here. Now here's the HE-219, uh, the plane that I talked about in my work in progress on the Galaga kit that I'm working on. I'm still yet to paint the camo on that, but this is what uh, is basing the, the camo, or what I will be basing the camo off of this airplane model. So that's pretty cool. Unique coincidence. That's that's, that's the plane featured in this magazine. Uh, some tips and tricks, I guess, here about different uh, car modeling stuff. Uh, so there you go. All about that. Uh, some tank model stuff here as well. This would be a girl's und Panzer tank, and I think we've got a Girls and Panzer sort of poster or something in here. Oh, that's awesome, isn't it? Uh, so we got some more Girls and Panzer stuff, a lot of that, um, which had th that had to have been relatively new at the time as well. We met 2013. Girls and Panzer is not that old, I think, so. Uh, so we got more about that, and then, yes, we have a sort of fold-out poster here of bikini-style Asuna. So it's from a Sword Art Online, right? Uh, we recently... Ben, I had the figureized uh, kit of her come out not too long ago. I didn't really like the look of it, so I didn't bother with it. But a uh, pretty cool bikini figure there of Asuna, if you're a fan. Uh, here is, yeah, sort of online. This is the Figma that came out. So yeah, this is the Figma, and then Bandai made their actual uh, model kit version more recently, much more recently. Uh, so some other Figma stuff looks like, and all sorts of different advertisements for different things. Uh, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. I'm worried now if I'm getting into demonetization territory, so I don't want to focus on some of these pages too much. Uh, but over here about, uh, this looks like some different uh, GK, resin GK, resin garage kits over here. So this is maybe some stuff that you could get uh, at the time. G's Magazine. A lot of different advertisements for all sorts of girl things. So you guys, <laughs> I don't know how many of you are going to be especially interested in this either, but here we've got uh, 
figure Maniacs here kit of Supersonico. It's actually, there's a million different uh, figures of Supersonico, but this one actually looks like one of the better ones. A lot of them, I didn't really prefer the look of that one, but that one looks, looks pretty nice. Uh, just on a side note, I suppose, but uh, some other Figma stuff here as well. It looks like another different uh, kind of kits, resin kits, again, just garage kits for a lot of this stuff, it looks like. Definitely going to have to edit some of this video because some of this stuff I'm worried about, and it's kind of like you're not seeing it like super, in super close detail. Uh, but anyway, here's a little bit about a SAFS kit down here. Something Machine and Krieger. I think that's like the first Machine and Krieger thing I've seen in this magazine. It's that little bit there down in the corner. Uh, and yeah, just a, a bunch of this stuff here. I'm just kind of, kind of like fast forward through this, I think, because not really anything of too much interest to you guys, I'd imagine. But basically, there's kind of just a whole bunch more of just this kind of advertisement kind of stuff. And this is the reason why I definitely prefer stuff more like the Gundam Hobby Life magazines, because they don't have all this crap in here that I just don't really care that much about. Like half the magazine is just taken up by stuff that's just completely unrelated. So I don't really care for it too much. Uh, this is cool though. This is uh, the Gundam Head Collection. This was a kind of thing that Bandai was doing at the time. They have a, just a few of these. They unfortunately didn't make a whole lot of them. I really wish they would have kept up with this series of like, uh, um, I think they were like Gashapon or just like little figure heads that you could buy. So there's some pretty cool ones. A lot of these I've actually never seen before. Uh, some of these, so these are pretty awesome. They must be really rare because I don't think I've ever seen like the new, this has to be the unicorn. Uh, this age one and this one over here, I'm sure I've seen before because they must be the le less popular ones, but those look pretty awesome. Just got some more uh, stuff in here. We got, we got a couple other different, uh, I think these are other Kotobukiya kits down here as well. This would be uh, from Hitaka Ginke kit there and an Armor Core kit over here and some Muv Love stuff in here. So this is kind of like all Muv Love, uh, Votam's Virtual Lawn and uh, another Matt K kit here, the Luna Guns. So a little bit about some of the other more obscure stuff there. And then there's all sorts of other different little products and things coming out. There's a cool uh, Razifan thing there. I'm guessing that's also like a Robot Damashi or something. I would love to get an actual like proper kit of Razifan as well at some point. It'd be cool. Like Evangelion clone series, but still, it was pretty cool. And then another black and white section in here. Again, just here's a section about Gunhead, if any of you guys are familiar. Uh, there's that, and more magazine or more uh, figures and anime stuff related to Space Battleship Yamato, more Ultraman stuff, and what's this? Oh, this is about that uh, Evangelion sort of uh, manga. I guess it's not a manga, but more I guess it's just like a novel kind of thing. So Evangelion anima. So I don't know, I guess it's a novelization or something anyway, of like a side story, but anyway, you got that weird kind of monster thing here. I guess it's supposed to be an alien, or an uh, <laughs> angel, I suppose, or something like that, but uh, I got that, and just a couple little bits of artwork, but it's mostly just a novel here. And then some mini four-wheel drive cars, other different uh, Dengeki Hime advertisements, and a little bit in here, it looks like about like a resin kit modeling, GK modeling. And then by Blade, again, I'm pretty sure the artist that does all the artwork for uh, Desktop Army. And yeah, I think that pretty much just about does it. You can think you guys get the idea. So there's a lot of just this artwork stuff in here. This is uh, for Wonderfest 2013. Uh, so yeah, nothing really too much else interesting, I think, after that. So that's pretty much going to do it. We have a little bit of manga something here at the back. I'm not really sure what that's related. It looks like the, it looks like a Super Robot Wars actually. Uh, so anyway, there's a little bit of that right at the end. And actually a little more of that than what I was expecting. It's quite a few pages of that, but that is gonna be it. And then, uh, yeah, we're done. So, all right. Uh, interesting, take a look back, back to 2013, March, Dengeki Hobby here. What did you guys think? Uh, do you want to see more? Like I said, I have a few more of older issues like this. 
uh, from around that time, like 2009, I think, like 2012. I think I have a couple issues from around that time as well. So if you guys would like to see more, let me know. If not, then let me know as well. I'm sure, hopefully, if you guys are not really interested in this, you didn't make it to this far in the video. You hopefully just switched off and went to go watch something else at, by this point. But if you made it to this point, then I guess you must have been at least interested enough to just have a listen and have a peek through the magazine a little bit. So some cool stuff in there. It's cool to see back to a lot of cool events with Zeta stuff back before like we had a lot of more proper advanced Zeta kits like we have now, just very recently. And then all the unicorn stuff that was coming out at the time and everything, and the, the Masquerade Tall Geese, of course, was cool to see when that was first coming out. So thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, guys, check out the link to USA Gundam store there down below. Shop online there and use my coupon code Zacharelius10. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye, guys.